Star Flight from Electronic Arts. It's an old game. Really good game, though. And Warp Speed by Act. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Andy VGR. I, of course, am Andy VGR. Now, it's cold outside here where I'm at, and it's blah, blah, blah. So I decided, why don't we leave Earth for a while on this little review. We're going to be looking at two Sega Genesis games. And those are Starflight from Electronic Arts. It's an old game. Really good game, though. And Warp Speed by Accolade. Uh, I wish I could say this was really good. We'll get into it. Now, before we uh, dig into these, let's just take a look. It says right here in Starflight. Now, this was originally... Uh, Binary Systems is who made it. They also made a sequel uh, for computer. And it was converted for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive by Blue Sky Software. Now, uh, the back here it says, An alien mystery darkens the galaxy. And includes a short story based on Starflight by Hugo and Nebula winner Robert Silverberg. Might be kind of neat. And it says there's 270 star systems and 800 planets, gas giants, lava worlds, and more. Now, the problem is you can't really explore gas giants in the game. They kill you, so that's kind of a... Mm. Anyways, it says, um, upload, I'm sorry, unload your starship's arsenal in real-time combat against warships. Uh, you can command a powerful starship and crew on a mission to save the galaxy's future by discovering the secrets of its past. Search hostile planet services with violent storms, brutal terrains, and savage beasts. Take a starship into real-time combat, space flight, orbits, planet landings, yada, yada, yada. And it's got an 8 ultra-compressed MEG cartridge with a battery backup and a save feature. There's 9 different alien races and includes a detailed star map and poster. Now, I don't have the detailed star map poster. Um, now, Electronic Arts games on the Sega Genesis were notorious for being looking like this. That's right, they had a nice little uh, EA kind of old emblem up here. And uh, that actually pops off, and there's nothing really underneath it. And that's how the games looked. Um, but you knew it was Electronic Arts by that. Uh, the case is pretty big. The manual, though, that's what takes the cake. The manual on this bag, boy, is huge. Yeah. And yeah, basically, it tells you everything you need to know, though. I mean, right inside here, it tells you about the artist. And, uh, for instance, Greg Johnson took Greg four... It took Greg, four other guys, and a bankroll the size of Detroit. Fifteen man years to finish the first star flight in 1986. Took Greg considerably less time to redesign it for the Sega Genesis. Greg worked on Electronic Arts Humor Award winning Caveman UG Olympics and created the hilarious dialogue in Starflight and Starflight 2. And it says here that Blue Sky converted the original version of Starflight into the Sega Genesis version. Established in 1988, Blue Sky Software now has over 20 employees who blow off steam with rubber band wars. Don't visit them unless you're fully armed. So, I mean, it's got... It's got humor in there. That's a good thing this day and age. Don't we all agree? And basically, this is very uh, intuitive, the manual is. It shows you a picture of, of the guy that wrote the, uh, the novel in here. And it basically... It's right here, called Through the Time Lens by Robert Silverberg. There's an ancient Eloian proverb said to go back to the days of the long-vanished old empire. Don't ever trust the Thryn bearing gifts. There's no love lost between Eloian and Thryn, and never has been. But even the most trusting humans are leery of them. My grandmother used to say, If you have a Thryn as a dinner guest, be on your best behavior but count the spoons afterward. I don't know, maybe that's my best Patrick McNee. I, I have no idea. I suppose it's because the Thryn are reptilian life forms that were uneasy. Most humans simply aren't comfortable around reptiles, an attitude that stems from an ancient Earth legend about some difficulty involving a snake, an apple, and the first female human. The snake tempted her with an apple, and all kinds of trouble followed. So when we found out that a Thryn colony on a planet called Jethmaza 7... Jathamasa 7 is looking to hire a mostly human crew for a lot of moves. Our first reaction was suspicion. Yeah, so it just goes on from there, and my goodness, uh, so many pages this is. Hmm. It's not 
not bad. It starts on page 10 and goes to 42, so it's 32 pages of a short story. Uh, then you get a little captain's brief, tells you about the game, tells you how to play it, of course. And then he does something neat. This is, you know, we get the short end of the stick anymore with games, I'll tell you. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Steam and all, you know, for digital purchases, Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, all that, that's cool. You don't have to go out, you don't have to buy a disc. But look what you don't get anymore. A nice big thick book with colored photographs of the races you're going to see in the game. These pictures take me back to good old sci-fi novels, you know, back when they used to show the, the planet and stuff. Uh, that they'd be on. It, it's just kind of neat. Like right here, this is a Thrin. It, it's a big reptile. So, I mean, yeah, it's kind of neat. And uh, you have a Mechan. Uh, that's basically androids. And they're they're kind of neat looking. And oh, Okay, I'll show you. I'll show you. A Mechan. There's the Mechans. That's right. These little guys. Sorry, I got too many lights in my face, so it's kind of hard to get the angle right. Then we have a Gazertoid. A very religious race and believe themselves to be redeemers of the galaxy. Uh, they look like, um, yeah, I don't know. You tell me what that is and I'll get back to you. Then we have uh, uh, Veloxi, and they're basically insectoids. That's right, insects. Uh, we have uh, the minstrels. No, I'm not even going to go there. Minstrels are spacefaring poets. They look like galaxies. I don't know. Uh, then you have the Spemin. S P E M I N. Spemin. Have the most. Have been the most helpful with providing information about other races. No idea what that is supposed to be. You tell me. The, the, the blue thing. That's what it was. Uh, but you have a places of interest here. It shows little screenshots from the game and like tells you cool little places you can find in the game. It's it's a very nice game. I used to set around when I was a kid, and uh, matter of fact, actually, um, you get some uh, captain's log from uh, a ship in the game. Matter of fact, here something called the rod device. Women. I don't know, I don't want to know about the rod device, alright? Uh, this sounds too bad. The ring device. One ring device to rule them all, apparently. The black egg, yeah. Now, here in the back, there's a life form chart. Now, I didn't fill this out. I bought this game used. Um, I always wanted a copy of it ever since I was a kid. But when I used to rent this, I used to actually go around and keep notes on a pad of paper. And uh, I would just sit there and just scribble out different coordinates uh, that I liked. I don't know, I was kind of a goofy kid, I guess. But, it seems here that uh, when you capture a creature, check your inventory to see what kind it is, and log it here for future reference. So, like, this person had an insect and a monetary value of 50 at a starport. A crawl eye was 500. And it tells you what kind of, like, shape they're in and what color. Uh, then you have a... Flux log, and fluxes, well, I'll show you one in the game, uh, are basically wormholes. They take you one end to the other on, on the giant galaxy overview. If all of this sounds familiar, um, it's because uh, Mass Effect uses a lot of the same mechanics in this game. It's very eerie how close the, the two are related. It makes you wonder if, uh, if some of the guys, obviously they got their inspirations from, from old space games. Now, Starflight, you know, there were a bunch of other games. Star Control, uh, Ur Urkorn Masters, I don't even know how to say the name, so I'm not even going to try. Um, and that's that's pretty much it for the manual. And um, came out in 1991, it's a good game. Uh, and then, here's something else cool. I like the back of these things. Thrilling Adventures. Something I noticed really neat about the Sega Genesis is they got a lot of computer ports. Uh, for instance, this one had Centurion, Defender of Rome, Buck Rogers, Counting Down to Doomsday, Might and Magic, and Rings of Power. Now, I don't know if any of these are PC ports, but they weren't your typical games. I never saw anything like this really on the SNES. The SNES reminded me more of actual video games where the Genesis was almost like a lab experiment or something, which I kind of like. So yeah, it, th these games look fun. I'll have to pick one of these up sometime. 
So for right now, let's go ahead and let's pop Starflight in and let's see what happens when we play it here. Oh, looky there. I love the opening theme song to this, so I'm going to play the whole thing. The first thing to do in the game is to name yourself. Well, I think I'll name myself Dylan Hunt. Well, I can't put in Hunt as it doesn't allow that many characters, but yeah, this will be close enough. Dylan H. So after you start the game, you're a little spaceman inside of a space station. And what you should do is go to the far left door to read and check on any messages you have. And of course, the first message you get is a Bon Voyage. You gotta know a game has a lot of humor when it references Star Trek before you even get out into the, the main part of the game. I mean, so, like, look right here. Seek out and explore strange new worlds. Boldly go where no man has gone before. I mean, yeah, that's pretty cool. Then you have established contact with any sentience. Capture and bring back non-sentient life forms. Record alien life form data. Bring back alien artifacts, bring back any valuable minerals, including Endurium. That's the fuel in the game, Endurium. But I like number eight. Number eight's gotta be the best. Keep from getting brutally killed. Okay, so I can get killed uh, other ways in the game. I just can't get killed brutally, apparently. That's, that's nice, nice of them to throw that in there, guys. I'll make sure not to get brutally killed. All right, so after you've read your daily email, I guess you could say in the game, it's off to select your crew. Now, basically, you get to create characters. Uh, they don't really do much for you other than they help you run your ship. So when you say, uh, you know, scan this, the higher the ability that person has in scanning, uh, basically in science, uh, the better off you are. So just for the benefit of speed, I'm going to create uh, two here. One is an android. Uh, androids have a naturally high ability in navigation and engineering. I'm going to name it Rami. Uh, and then I'm going to create a human, and I'll name him Harper. And then what you can do is you can train. Now, it costs money to train, but as you watch, the numbers will fly up on the abilities that I'm assigning to this person. After that, it is off to outfit your ship. You can choose cargo pods. Uh, of course, the more you get, um, the, the heavier the ship is, and of course, the more uh, stuff you can haul around. I'm gonna, you can choose engines, although not at this beginning space station, you can't. Uh, you can choose shields and weapons and all kinds of stuff like that. And then a TV. 
No, not exactly. The captain doesn't sit back and watch a plasma screen or anything. The TV is the little mining vehicle you get in the game. It let, lets you get out and explore vehicles, or I'm sorry, planets, in this vehicle. And uh, you can outfit it with a bunch of different options. The best option you can get, though, is the Mineral Scanner 2. The game is crazy. Now, I'll explain the mineral scanning later. Just believe me, it's it's nuts when you get the second one. And so then after that, you go off and you can buy and sell commodities. In this case, we're going to need to put the rest of our money in Endurium Plus. That's the fuel. And then it is off out the space lock. That's right. Boom. We're out the airlock. And then, now that you're out here in space, you get to travel around to different planets. That's right. You basically enter the orbit of the planet. You can scan the planet. You can choose where to land on the planet. Analyzing. Then when you land, you're brought down to a high view of the ship as it descends down onto the planet. And then it gets l the closer you get to the ground, the camera changes, and then you start applying the uh, the, the thrusters there. And of course, it uses fuel. Now, if you don't, you just kind of smack the ground, and it takes away from your armor. And once your armor goes down, your crew starts taking damage and or dies. Once you're on the planet, you get out in the little tiny TV. You do a disembark, and while you're walking around on the planet and in this little vehicle, you do a scan. Now the scan brings, brings the entire screen blue, except it shows you where the minerals are. Then you get over, drive over there with the TV and you start extracting the mineral. Now there, you base, that's basically the basis of the game. But you can also leave the solar system. And there's a ton of different solar systems out there. You fly to another one that takes up a lot more fuel and you basically just plop down on another planet and you do the same thing over and over again. Now there is a big overall draw to the game. Uh, there's more than just you know going around to different planets and mining. That's not the main focus of the game. The main focus is that the suns are flaring up and you have about a year in game time to figure out what's causing it. Now I'm not going to ruin it for you so if you're ever going to play this I'm not going to ruin the storyline for you and uh, you, you do end up finding out what it is. But anyways, uh, you meet different alien races along the way, of course, some hostile, some friendly. Uh, you can also traverse these warp lanes, which are basically like uh, um, uh, portals, basically, that allow you to go like a wormhole from one end of the galaxy to another, and you keep going on and on. And uh, you can also, uh, you know, buy, sell commodities, just, just general things like that. It's a very fun game that focuses on exploration, and uh, just fun. It's it's great. It, it's a fun game. The gameplay is simple. Um, the the only weird things I've ever really seen in it are, uh, for instance, there's one ship you'll encounter. It only asks you math questions, and you have to know how to answer it, and that can be kind of daunting to figure out. But other than that, it's just a really fun game, and uh, you you should go like like buy a copy. And, and, and that way you can legally download the, the ROM for it, because it is worth it, the, the two or three bucks you'll spend buying the physical copy. All right, so that's Starflight. It's a very, very good game. I recommend it. I used to rent it from a local video store all the time. Absolutely love this game. It's just fun. It's one of those games that reminds you of, of your childhood, you know, and when things seem to be more magical, that's for sure. Now we're going to look at Warp Speed, another game I used to rent from the same video store. Warp Speed was made by Accolade. Games with personality. It's got one player, it says on the back, and it really does have a uh, little fist. It's kind of weird. Okay, Warp Speed, uh, number one thing you notice right off the bat, it's in a cardboard box. Now, a lot of Genesis games, uh, at the end, they had the nice little red cardboard box that slid out. Uh, most of them that I've ever seen had the hard plastic case like this. This one's in a cardboard box, so it looks different on the shelf. And I mean, it looks like fun at first. So basically, you're like looking out of the front of a cockpit, or maybe, I don't know, a. it looks to me like a space station watching something get blown up. But you see he's got like shooting laser beams and stuff, right? I don't remember laser beams in the game, though. Yeah, it, it's not like that. So on the back of the box here, uh, that's what it looks like. It says, in your face combat against a swarming alien armada. There's four starfighters, four alien races, 
16 enemy spacecraft, 7 battle scenarios, 512 locations. Basically, when you put the game in, you get a choice here of different like missions you can do, training missions, different scenarios. Now, I give them points for that. That's kind of cool. Because most games, it's like, here you go, here's the game, and you're going to play the game till it's finished, and that's pretty much it. And now they let you go around and explore the world when they're done. But, you know, you get to finish anything up you didn't get to do the first time. This one at least says, okay, here's a bunch of scenarios. In that regard, it reminds me of... of uh, yeah, I can't think of it right now, but it's a space-based RTS, and I'm sure you're screaming at the screen right now and probably writing it in the comments below. It came out. It didn't really have a campaign. It's just got a bunch of scenarios and maps you can play. I really wish I could think of it. Okay, anyways, uh, it says here, Warp Speed's incredible 3D graphics and cockpit perspective put you so close to the combat that your eyebrows may get fried. Let's see here. Yada, yada, yada. Piloting a hyper-fast, heavily armed starfighter against the evil alien horde. Your mission? Blow the crater-faced mutants back to their black holes before they can burn Earth to a crisp. And then it tells you all about the the things here and there's eight quadrants with 64 sectors each you get to warp around 512 galactic locations what they mean by that 512 grids really now just like starflight warp speed has an awkward uh, game cartridge as well yeah that's the warp speed cartridge it's kind of weird it reminds me of the tengen uh nes cartridges it's just black, says Alkalade on the back, says Warp Speed, and that's that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much to it at all. Sins of a Solar Empire. That was the game. I remembered it. Anyways, um, let's look at the manual here. Uh, it's black and white manual, typical manual here. Okay, getting started. Control pad. The journey begins. Earth has been at peace for over a thousand years. Really? The technological... The, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> technology for warfare has been replaced with technology for space colonization and exploration. Ten years ago, scientists sent unmanned space probes into the mysterious black holes scattered across the galaxy. No data was ever received, and the probes were assumed lost, if only they had been. The black holes, as it turned out, were portals to other quadrants of the galaxy. Yeah, basically, aliens get mad that we send a bunch of gas at them, or crap at them. And as a pilot for the Galactic Armed Services, or GAS, really, their organization's name is GAS, you've been assigned to protect GAS's starbase scattered throughout the eight explored quadrants of space using the one-of-a-kind starfighter. They look like F-16s in space. I mean, what? One-of-a-kind? It's like I'm playing Top Gun in space. The enemy, only known as the Horde... The alien invaders are made up of a number of different alien species allied together for the sake of conquest. Did the guys from this show, Star Trek Enterprise, get their idea from this game? I don't know. So basically, um, just tells you how to play the game, A, B, and C. Um, so now get this. You're in the cockpit, you control your ship by climbing, diving, and steering uh, with a directional pad, of course. In long-range scanner, turn your ship left or right. So, yeah, I'll just explain that. You also press Start Plus to move the warp destination cursor. You can warp between different sectors. It's, it's okay, or you just naturally move into them. Um, you know, it works. Uh, the Start button, yada, yada, yada. Start Plus A, select one enemy ship to target for smart missiles. Start Plus C, pause or unpause the game during a mission. Now, wait a minute. If I push the Start button, it selects menu items or toggles options in the game options screen. But if I hit start plus A, I select which enemy ship to target for smart missiles. If I hit start plus C, pause or unpause the game during a mission. If I hit the start and the down, I decrease my speed. If I hit start plus B, I select my smart missile rack. Start and up is increased speed or thrust, or request warp speed after selecting a destination and returning to cockpit. A button, launch ship from base, toggle buttons and game options screen, confirm passcode and resume campaign screen, and fire smart missiles. Wow, the multifaceted A button. C button, though. Or actually B button, fire your starfighter's energy weapons. Yeah, that's not the lasers. That's like little, like, 
pumpkins flying out of your ship. It's like an old lady with a walker is pushing your energy weapons into the enemy. It, it's that bad. C button, activate the long range scanner, activate the radio if a message is pending, deactivate the long range scanner and return to cockpit, or deactivate the radio and return to the cockpit. Computer space terminology. Galaxy, the galaxy in warp speed is composed of eight quadrants. Quadrant, area of space, yada, yada, yada. So you basically go through here, and the scenarios. Okay, this is the part I was telling you about. Scenarios is training. Um, clear a single quadrant of enemy ships. Enemies are slow in this scenario, so they are easy to destroy. Pirate busting, destroy enemy pirates, ships attacking, convoys in two local quadrants, then destroy their leader. Carrier Wars. Eliminate enemy carriers spread out in four quadrants before they release the swarm of enemy fighters they transport. No Haven. Enemy ships have destroyed all but two bases. You must eliminate all, eliminate all enemies before they destroy Earth's surviving outposts. Skirmish. A strong solar storm has knocked out sensors in six quadrants. Your long-range scanner will only detect vessels in the eight sectors surrounding your ship. You must find and destroy all enemy vessels. Space Maze. Find the hidden route to all eight quadrants and destroy all enemy ships you confront along the way. Nexus. Use the black holes found in Quadrant Alpha to hunt down enemy ships, which have assembled for their final assault on humanity. And then Campaign. Four length scenarios from a pool of ten are randomly drawn. These scenarios differ from the ones above and must be completed in order. They also get increasingly difficult. So, the mission design is very cool in this game. I mean, tops on that. That's kind of neat. It sounds very intuitive. And basically you get missions. During a scenario you may be called on your radio and what happens is basically a little text message pops up and says go do this, go do that, yada yada yada. So there's four different uh, kinds of ships. There's the Stinger, the Striker, the Stalker, and the Slasher. Somebody liked Essence. They all look like jets. They certainly do. The game feels like your The game feels definitely like you're playing a science experiment. I mean, just the navigation panel is just a bunch of info. It's like I just want to play a game. I feel like I'm doing homework. All right, so the enemy ships, the Wedge, the Raptor, the Trident, and the Devastator. Here's a picture of those. Um, yeah, not too big on them. So, carriers are ships traveling across the screen far in the distance. They never get close to you, but it's vital they be destroyed as each one transports dozens of enemy fighters. A well-aimed smart weapon attack usually does the trick. Yeah, no trick. There's bases, black holes, minefields, asteroid belts. There's a ton of asteroids in this game. Uh, metals and ranks and 90-day warranty and... Oh, yeah. License agreement and legal mumbo jumbo. Warp speed is a trademark of Accolade Inc. All rights reserved. All other trademarks or registered trademarks are properties of their respective owners. Neither the cartridge nor the user manual may be duplicated or copied for any reason. The customer name may not transfer or resell the cartridge or user manual. Whoever sold me this is in deep doo-doo. Ooh. The remedies provided above are the customer sole and exclusive remedies. In no event shall Accolade Inc. be liable for any direct, indirect, special, incidental, or consequential damages with respect to the cartridge or the user manual, except as provided in the warranty section. Accolade Inc. makes no warranties, either express or implied, with respect to the cartridge or the user manual, and expressly disclaims all implied warranties, including without limitation the warranty of merchantability and the fitness for a particular purpose. No idea what that means. Let's just put the dumb game in and let's see how it goes here. Okay, so here's the info in this game. You basically fly around, you shoot slow moving projectiles at your enemies, and it's you fly around and you do that again and again and again until there's no more enemies left. That's pretty much the game. It's okay once you get the bigger ships, it's kind of cool because the projectiles get a little bit faster. But, I mean, when there's other great games out there you could be playing, like Star Fox and stuff, it's best just to leave Warp Speed in the past where it belongs. Way, way in the past.
Okay, I can't take this anymore. I'm just gonna, like, take this game out and put something fun in just to, you know, remember what a video game should be like. Okay, so, yeah, sorry about that, got a little carried away. So, Warp Speed isn't, I mean, it's an okay game. Um, it, it just does not stand up to Starflight, and, but, you know, each, each and every game is different. This is more of a, a, a fighter, and this is more of an exploration game. Um, these are, you know, this is a very good game to get. I paid, I think, four bucks or something for this used with manual. I thought, wow, that's a good treat. And I don't even remember how much for this. It was even less, I think. Um, but, you know, they're not bad games. I, I just wish there was actual... There was a point in time when I was really good at warp speed. I had, like, the top ship, and I kicked butt with it. So, you know, once you get to that level, it's kind of cool. And it's a nice touch. It's got a bunch of scenarios. You can't, you can't go wrong with it, really. But Starflight's where it's at for me, personally. I really like this game. Well, guys, this is Andy here signing off, uh, saying sorry it's been so long, but um, I'm getting to the point now where I can start rolling these babies back out. And next time, I got kind of a special treat for you. That's right. Next time, we're all going to be going on a, well, we're all going to be going on a Herculean adventure. That's right. Whoa, what in the world is going on here? That's right. I'm going to be reviewing Hercules, the Legendary Journeys for the Nintendo 64. It'll be the first time I ever review an N64 game on this. And I thought, why not? Why not do something? Back when I was a kid, I used to love this show. Matter of fact, I still love this show. It's a funny show. I mean, look at that. That's just classic. All right, this is Andy VGR saying good gaming, everybody.